It's now my great privilege to introduce our 2007 Convocation guest speaker, Dr. Paul Rayo. Dr. Rayo is the Vice President of Clinical Services, Quality and Compliance at the National Rehabilitation Hospital in Washington, D.C. Dr. Rayo received a PhD from the University of Maryland in College Park. His area of expertise is stroke rehabilitation, and he's currently the president of the National Aphasia Association. He's been an invited member of numerous expert panels convened by the National Stroke Association, the American Heart Association, the Institute of Medicine, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. He's known for his advocacy for people with disabilities. It's a great pleasure to have Dr. Rayo. Thank you for the warm welcome. I think Dr. Waters takes her last name pretty literally here in Boston. I want to thank Gloria for inviting a University of Maryland Terrapin uh, to address this wonderful gathering of uh, terriers uh, this afternoon. I also want to pay special attention to Lisa Tornatoro, who is really perfecting the art of making the dean's office work. I thank Lisa for her, all of her logistics. BU's Sargent College is the university leader in rehabilitation research, and I'm so very honored to be part of your graduation day. Dr. Alan Jetty, Sargent's former dean and member of the PT faculty, has quite literally written the book on rehab research. And it was under a joint BU National Rehab Hospital grant and project that I published a consumer guide for people with stroke. Dr. Jetty may not remember me and my small stroke rehab project, but it has been his tutelage and sponsorship that has nurtured such a cascade of critically important patient-focused rehab research conducted by so many aspiring and accomplished clinical researchers. One of your PT faculty, Mary Palima, worked with me at National Rehab as assistant director and that another sergeant connection of mine is, I couldn't believe it, last night I ran into her, Sonora Simpson, 50 years, an alumni grad of BU and received award. She's chair of the PT licensing in DC, Sonora Simpson. I should mention that I am a speech language pathologist, or as we call ourselves, an SLP. And uh, I still see patients with aphasia. My wife, Martina, who's with me this, this afternoon, is a member of the Kennedy Krieger Hospital in Baltimore. And our firstborn child, Angela, is a speech language pathologist as well in the schools and in private practice in Baltimore. <clears throat> so know that I bleed SLP. And I should also mention that our third child, Jeff, wanted nothing to do with rehab. In fact, would be riding to mass in the morning and he'd say, can I just ask one favor? Sure, Jeff, what? Nobody talk. <clears throat> He now works as a VP for Fidelity Investment, a company you might be familiar with here in Boston, who also sponsored last night's Boston Pops for the beautiful Boston U uh, celebration. We'll talk a little bit more about Jeff later. Another NRH inpatient manager, Pat Farmer, and our OT supervisor, Lauren Rosenberg, are both Sargent alumni who are highly professional, top notch, and a credit to your campus. One final litany of sergeant, and that is my good friend, Dr. Nan Bernstein-Ratner, who chairs the hearing and speech department at the University of Maryland. Yes, is a graduate of Sargent College, uh, Boston University. So it would seem that all national academic and clinical leadership emanates from the banks of the Charles River. Sargent College, now in its 126th year, under Dr. Waters' leadership, continues to foster cutting edge training, education, and research. Between July 2005 and June 2006, Sargent submitted 46 applications for training grants and research projects and had a remarkable 86% hit rate. 40 projects were funded. I noticed recently, due to the high-tech exercise equipment and physical plant, that Men's Fitness Magazine has named BU as the number 10 in the country in best fitness. And it's uh, how better to prepare for the challenge facing you than to be super fit in mind and body. Sargent is also actively engaged in the community and in 
advocacy for the person served, persons with disability. I sit on the National Aphasia Association's board and was thrilled to be part of 2006's National Aphasia Association conference held right here in Boston. And over 300 consumers and professionals from around the world were here for this conference minutes away from the Charles River. It was a three-day conference proudly co-hosted by Sargent College. It takes visionary academic leaders passionate students and a committed administration to put all of such a high, pull off such a high quality consumer and professional conference whose outcome was to speak out to issues of legislative and insurance impact on the persons with disability and aphasia. You must know how critical advocacy is today and tomorrow. Rehab is facing rationing of services unprecedented to our beneficiaries of Medicare. When you take off your cap and gown today, do not lose the mantle of advocacy, literally, literally, to speak out. I want to share a brief magical moment I had last year with my wife in Bryant Park. I titled it Kismet in Bryant Park. It's a vignette about rather unique experience surrounding the aura of aphasia. On the day last spring when the NAA's gala was being held in New York City, my wife Martine and I were walking around Bryant Park. We saw a huge tent very similar to this abode, walked in, and it was tons of books there being given away free by the Academy of American Poets. Not being much of an aficionado, I picked the thinnest uh, book there, took it, and it was called The Last Long Meadow by V.J. Shishardi. I opened the book up. Page 26, aphasia. I looked at Martina. We thought it was kind of eerie. It was kind of Broca was channeling here. And I wanted to read to you um, v Vijay's wonderful poem about how he nails aphasia and fluent aphasia. By the way, I asked Vijay, he's at Sarah Lawrence College. I said, who do you know that has aphasia? He says, I know no one has aphasia. But words are my life, and I have abject fear of having aphasia. And that's why I wrote about it. His signs flick off, his names of birds, and his beautiful words, elemocinary, fur, cinerarium, reckless, skip like pearls from a snapped necklace scattering over linoleum. His thinking won't venture out of his mouth. His grammar heads south, pathetic his subjunctives, just as pathetic his mangling of the emphatic and clitic he once was the master of. Still, all in all, he has his inner weather of pure meaning Though the wind is keening through his Alps and his clouds hang low and the forecast is rain mixed with snow, heavy at times. Imagine someone who has lost language. VJ nailed it. BU, Sargent College, is the only private institution in the country with five, count them, five nationally ranked grad programs in health and rehab sciences. As I reviewed your website, I was so amazed at the awards, the accomplishments, and the various programs. BU Sargent rocks. If I, too, wanted to pursue a rehab degree, clearly Sargent would be in the top tier of schools I'd want to go to. But you know what? I would not qualify. The SAT and GRE scores would not permit me to enter such an august body. The SAT average of 1299 and a GRE average of 1200 would leave me way out in the rain. I'm sure every one of you is extremely proud of your hard-earned and highly respected degree. You have the rep and the sheepskin. Now you need to deliver on your parents or your own wise investment and in sergeant's sage schooling. Jeff, our fidelity investment son, asked me last year why Martine and I, so far along in our career, did not have a beach house and a BMW. I said, Jeff. You and your sister's high school and college tuition was our beach house and luxury wheels. Martine and I invested in the mind, and we are receiving dividends from both that far exceed fidelity investment. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Jeff still has none of his parents' meager portfolio. We remember all too well as University of Delaware unpaid parking tickets and overdue parking and library notices. But all in all, we're very proud of Jeff and Angie, 
just as your parents and extended family glisten with glee over your graduation. I know the last couple of years, we, when, we took, <laughs> when we took Jeff back to college, we had to act sad because we were living the vita loca as being empty nesters. <laughs> when he returned, we said, Jeff, we love you, but this is June 1st, July 1st, we start splitting the mortgage, the utilities, and food three ways. <laughs> June 30th, Jeff took a bus to Dallas and hasn't been back since. <laughs> Je Jeff has a college degree in hand and a high degree of guts, and again took the Greyhound, and for the past seven years has made it in his own on business. Returning to Baltimore for family, for fun, for food. In preparing for this address, I read through a commencement address I gave at Maryland several years ago. I read Daniel Goleman here at Harvard University's work on emotional intelligence, who says that is the sine qua non, or in layman's terms, the absolute must have for any leader. And the terms that he uses are the importance of self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills in becoming a leader. Recently, I read Leah Coca's new book on leadership, where he expounds on the nine C's, from curiosity, communication, character, and creativity, to courage, conviction, competence, charisma, and common sense. I asked our son Jeff, who flew in from last, LA last week for, to surprise his mom on Mother's Day, Jeff, what would a gung-ho graduate want to hear? And without skipping a beat and being naive to what Iacocca said about the C's, he said, Dad, I have the four high C's. What are they, Jeff? Well, without skipping a beat, Dad, whether it's business or health care, and you should know that business is, uh, health care is a business, successful grad will want to possess these four C's in spades. The first is confidence. On interview, can you sell ice to Eskimos? Convey the palpable belief in yourself that is a gnat's eyelash shy of cocky. Will staff follow you instinctively because you obviously know the way? The next C is competence. You need the skill level. Once you get in the door with confidence, you must have competence or you will be toast. Get the degree and credential and training you need to possess to excel at your career. I became a certified financial planner because that is the mark of excellence in my business. The third C, competitive. You're coaching me in sports and seeing how you aren't crazy about finishing second taught me how to always compete to win whatever the goal or prize is. Life is sports, isn't it, Dad? A big lifelong competition with winners and losers. And lastly, you will be surprised to hear me say, caring. You must care for yourself and others. Last Friday, I brought in a breakfast of Starbucks and Cinnabombs to the office to care for my team in my Italian fashion of fill their stomachs and their hearts and minds will follow. If you care for your team, they will care for the mission, vision, and values you espouse. I'd like to quote here an important uh, message that I received from the late, great Albert Schweitzer who said, I do not know what your destiny will be, but I do know this, that those among you who will be truly happy are those who have found a way to serve. So. Those are Jeff's four C's. Show confidence, competence, be competitive, and care. And to that, I add a fifth. Carpe diem. Life's up and downs and life experiences have shown me that this is a very important C. Seize the day. Martina and I lost our 16-year-old son, middle child, Paul Martin, to an auto accident 17 years ago on December 7th, our very own Pearl Harbor. Just before the accident, PM and I did a book and movie review of the Dead Poets Society. It was his junior project, which I knew he would not finish. Um, again, the movie showed Robin Williams standing in the corridor, whispering, carpe diem, to these freshmen. Seize the day in the ears of these nice and bright freshmen, high school students, looking at the framed grads in the lobby wall. Paul asked, what does that mean, carpe diem? I explained the best, that I the best that I could, the concept of to make today count. That everyone on that graduation wall 
was now in the ground? Did they leave a legacy? Paul with a smile said, Dad, that's what I do. I live today like there is no tomorrow. Thank God. For a week later, he died. Martine and I to this very day cherish his 16 years of trouble, fun, and discovery. We played Bob Marley's theme of Three Little Birds as the closing hymn at his funeral mass, the repeated, repeated refrain, so don't worry about a thing, everything's gonna be all right. We know about Carpe Diem, don't we? Experiencing the collective community revulsion from Columbine to Virginia Tech. Gifted students who woke up, flossed their teeth, dressed for school, and faced the day like any other. We are all Hokies now, as we also whisper to each other that important C to Carpe Diem. Embrace each other on this wonderful moment, treasuring your time together and expressing today what you should not leave to tomorrow. To life, la calm, centanos, or as the Italians say, to 100 years. Godspeed, God bless you, and go be you. Amen.